Hi, my name is Chris, and this is part 3 of my little plywood sailboat making video series. If you haven't already seen parts 1 and 2, you probably should. Today I'm going to show you how me and my son made this great little sail from a pretty ordinary white poly tarp. The sail we're making is a 59 square foot leg o mutton sail designed by naval architect Phil Bolger. One of the nice things about this sail is the boom is quite high, which is great for not getting hit in the head. The three edges of a sail all have their own names, as do the three points. It's helpful to mark those because it's easy to get the sail mixed up and make it the wrong way. Silly easy to mix up triangle. What I love is that we're making the sail from a poly tarp, which is super cheap compared to most other things you could make a sail from. Blue and silver seem to be the most common colors for these tarps, but we found a white one so my wife wouldn't be embarrassed going sailing with us. We started by drawing a straight line up one side of the tarp at least an inch and a half away from the grommets. From here we used two tape measures and a stick and a lot of guess and check until we had the sail the right dimensions. Here's a drawing with the measurements we used. It's important to note there's a 1 inch gap between the lines at the head and a 3 inch gap at the tack. Having those gaps makes the measuring kind of awkward, but we did eventually get it all figured out and marked some dots at the end of each line. Then with the help of some sandbags we stretched a line between each mark and marked along the line that was stretched between each mark. Then we used some straight edges to connect all our marks giving us a big flat triangle. A good sail though isn't just a flat triangle, it needs some puffy outiness. So we're going to add some rounding to the luff and the foot. We made a mark 3 inches out from the luff at a point 5 feet away from the tack. And another mark 2.5 inches out from the foot, 3.5 feet away from the tack. We used those marks and a long flexible piece of wood to create beautiful curves on the luff and the foot. It might be worth noting that we're using whiteboard markers here. It's like writing on the biggest whiteboard ever. Next we lay down a strip of half inch wide double sided tape on the outside edge of the curved lines we just drew as well as along the straight edge of the leech. We drew a 12 inch line going into the sail starting from the center of the tack. That line is where we're going to end up making a dart later. And we made marks 1 inch from either side of that line near the tack. We made some more marks 1.5 inches away from the outside lines of our sail, you know the ones we taped along, and then cut along those marks leaving us with something that looks a lot more like a sail now. We made a crease along our dart line, lining up the two marks we made at the tack and folding it over. Of course darts don't like to just stay folded down on their own, so we added some double sided tape. Remember how we used whiteboard markers? Well now it's time to use a whiteboard eraser, or an old rag. Next we grabbed some 4mm polyester rope. Polyester is a good choice because it doesn't stretch as much as nylon. We did stretch it though between the points of the sail. Then we exposed the stickiness of our double sided tape and folded it over the rope. So the double sided tape is going over the rope and sticking to the other side of the sail, basically making a little pocket for the rope. It's important that your double sided tape is sticky enough. I used some thinner lower quality stuff on my second sail and it was pretty much a nightmare. Now would be a good time to mention that the sail making techniques I'm using here were pioneered by Dave Gray from Polysail International. He knows a lot about tarps and a lot about sails, so check him out. I wasn't 100% sure what to do at the points of the sail, but I just basically cut the point off flat and trimmed the tarp the best I could so it would still cover up the rope but not have too much extra tarp. When we got back to where we started we overlapped the rope for a ways and folded it inside the edge the same way we had done everything else. A little awkward and bulky, but it kinda worked. Now the outside edge of our original tarp, you know the part with the grommets in it, well it's made from a double layer of poly that's heat sealed together, which just happens to make great strips for reinforcing the three corners of the sail. These are going to get double sidedly taped into place before we start sewing. We're planning on turning under the raw edge of the sail and sewing it down later on, so I needed to make sure it was already turned under at the corners before we tape down the reinforcement strip over top. You'll notice that the strips that cover the dart are long enough to cover the dart, and the strips for the other two corners are a little bit shorter. We added the reinforcement strips to both the front and back side of the sail, doing our best to line them up with each other so our sewing will catch both strips at the same time. Grabbed the sewing machine and started the long tedious task of folding under the raw edge of the sail and sewing it down. I think a three step zigzag is what's recommended, but I just had this kind of scallopy stitch on my machine. Either way it keeps the stitches from all being in a straight line. If they're all in a straight line you might get the tear on the dotted line effect and you generally don't want your sail to tear on any lines. I'm sewing as close to the hem as possible, especially on the luff, to leave space for the grommets later. I sewed around the edges of the reinforcements too. With all the zigzaggy sewing done, I grabbed some ferociously strong tape. 
I put two overlapping strips of tape diagonally at each corner. I cut the tape off about a centimeter away from the sail and then folded it under onto the other side. I then repeated the process on the back side of each corner. If you haven't figured it out already, the points of the sail get the most stress. So the more reinforced they are, the longer your sail's probably gonna last. After I was done taping the tape, I did some zigzagging along the edges just to make sure it wasn't ever gonna peel away. And lastly, I sewed right beside the rope that's trapped in the seam of the sail. I used the longest stitch length possible to create the fewest perforations. Okay, so we need some grommets along the left to attach the sail to the mast. We used 12 grommets and spaced them about 15 inches apart. We made sure to double check that we were doing this on the left and not the leech. Next, we installed the 12 grommets along the left and one more at the clue. Now, I could have got cheap grommets from the hardware store, but those were all plated steel and I knew they'd end up rusting sooner or later. So instead, I ended up ordering some 3 8 inch solid brass grommets from the internet. Another thing we wanted to be aware of was the placement of the grommets. I didn't want the hole for the grommet to cut through any of my stitches. And I didn't want the sharp edge of the grommet to be resting up against the rope and perhaps slowly cutting through the sail material. Once all the grommets were done, so was our sail. Alright, before we rig everything up, let's have a little cleat making montage. All we need is a place to be And a few good friends for some company If you'd like to stay, you don't have to leave We'll leave the lights on and the door unlocked If you drop on by, you don't have to knock We're happy to share whatever we've got Alright, well that was some fun cleat making. Now let's get that sail rigged up. We used some short pieces of rope to attach the sail to the mast. The top one goes through the hole in the mast and the rest just get tied around loosely. We measured approximately 7 feet up the mast, grabbed one of these little guys, and then attached it to the mast by wrapping some thin line around and around and around. It may already be apparent that I don't really know very many knots. I know how to do a square knot and I think a figure eight maybe? Everything else, I just make it up. Anyways, there's probably a better knot you should use if you're doing this. If your knot isn't that great, you should be able to slide it down the mast a little bit until it's tight. I tied a line to the tack of the sail using more fancy knots, and I tied a pulley to a rope that gets pulled through the hole at the end of the boom. Then that rope is used to tie the boom to the clue, again using the fanciest knots possible. I made one of these knots out of thicker rope and fed the rope through the link on the mast. I believe this rope is called the snotter, and I don't know why. But I do know the snotter rope goes through the slot on the boom with the knot acting as a stopper. Now when you pull down on the snotter, it tensions the sail by pulling the boom in. I tied a pulley to the back of the boat. It's a pulley that has an extra loop on it for tying another rope to it as well. And I tried to get it to end up pretty much in the center. Alright, so to rig up the sail, start by putting the mast in its hole. The sail gets unwound, revealing the boom, the end of the snotter gets jammed in the boom slot, and the snotter gets pulled down tight and tied off at the mast cleat. The rope at the tack of the sail gets pulled through that stainless steel loop thing, tensioned up and tied off at the cleat. I think that rope's maybe called the downhaul. Last rope gets tied to the pulley at the back of the boat, runs through the pulley at the end of the boom, and then back through the pulley at the back. Which apparently I forgot to do here, because I am forgetful. Anyways, that's it. It's all rigged up. And putting it away is pretty quick, because all you gotta do is slide the snotter out of the boom, flip the boom vertical, and roll the sail up around it. When it's all rolled up, you can use the snotter cord to wrap around it so it all stays in place. Ready for another day of sailing. I should mention, I had enough tarp left over to make another sail, so I did. I made a smaller one, just so we could still go out and sail if it was too windy for our normal sail. You can see us here trying it out, even though it wasn't really super windy. Well, I guess that's the end of this video. I do still have some footage of us tipping and riding the boat, so if you want to see that, let me know in the comments and I'll try and put something together. Thanks for watching. See ya!